Welcome to this session on PowerFX. Today we are diving into the heart of how Power Apps works. If you have ever used Excel formulas, you will feel right at home with PowerFX, but with a whole new level of control and flexibility in app development. So what's PowerFX? It's a low-code language designed for Power Apps, and it helps you control the behavior of your app. You can use it to calculate values, manipulate data, and even define what the user interface looks like. It's powerful because it gives you the flexibility to make your app dynamic instead of just static content. PowerFX lets you define rules and logic that react to user actions. If you're familiar with Excel formulas, you will notice PowerFX feels very similar. Formulas like sum or if work just like in Excel. In Power Apps, you can use them to do a lot more, like manage data and control what users see in the screen. Let's get started with an empty app so we can build our first examples. Right, so here in the Power Apps home screen, I'm going to go to my solution and create a blank app for us to learn PowerFX. On new, let's create an app, Canvas app. I'm going to call this one Learning Power FX. The format will be tablet, so we have more space to practice. Let's click on Create and wait for the app to load. Okay, now it's loaded and we have a blank app. The Power FX formulas will be placed always in this formula bar right here. Whenever we insert a control that we want to make this control interact with the other controls or with the user actions, we are going to put some PowerFX formula in there. Let's start seeing a basic example. First of all, let's insert a button. Here I'm going to search for a button. Since here I'm just seeing the classic controls, I'm going to go to properties and enable the modern controls in the updates. Now we can insert the modern button. Let's go to insert button. And now we have a button here. If I hit play and click on the button, nothing happens because I didn't put any formula yet. I didn't put any PowerFX command in there yet. For the controls that are clickable or selectable, for example, a button, we have this property called on select. Here is where we can add formulas to make it work, to make it do some action. For example, navigating to another screen or showing a notification to the user. First of all, let me just toggle the properties pane for the button. And let's do that classic one. When programmers are learning how to program, they do the first code that says hello world. We are going to show a notification to the user when the user clicks on the button that shows hello world. But let's first change the text of the button, the text property. Let's say hello. Okay, now when I click on the button, still nothing happens. Let's go back to the on select property. It's written false here, it means it won't do anything. And here's where we need to add our formula. And there is one formula in PowerFX that's used to show a notification to the user. Guess the name of the formula. The name is notify. So it's a function. It means we need to open and close parentheses. And inside these parentheses, we add the parameters of the functions, the arguments. The notify function expects a parameter that's the text that's going to be shown to the user. So in this case, I'm going to open and close double quotes and inside it, I'm going to put hello world, exclamation mark. Now, if I click the button, it will show this notification and this is our first formula. It's just a function that triggers this notification in the screen. Let's see, let's click play and click the button. Now we see this notification here saying hello world and I can dismiss it or if I wait a couple of seconds, it will disappear. That was our first formula in PowerFX. Was it difficult or easy? Now let's see how we can interact with more controls. Let's insert 
a text input. So I'm going to search here for text input. There is this one that's new and the second one that's the classic one. Let's insert both so we see how both work. The first one, and I'm going to insert again text, and I'm, I'm inserted the classic one. They look a little bit different, but in the end, they are just text inputs. If I play the app, I can type inside them. We can see a clear difference here, just visual, a little bit how to interact with them, but the purpose is the same. How can I access the text that I typed in here if I want to do anything? Let's show the text that's written here in a text label, just for us to understand how to access the properties of these controls. And this is done using PowerFX. Okay, so let's go back to edit mode and insert a text. Now I'm just inserting one text, that's the modern one. The text property of this text has text written on it. So many texts, but I could, I could write anything else, for example, hello. And then it will show here the text hello. Okay, but what if I want to get the text that's written here inside this first text input? Well, the name for this control is text input canvas one. I inserted that's the default name. I could rename it to, for example, txt input one. Now, if I want to access the text that's inserted in there, here in the text property, instead of having this hard-coded text, I could delete it and access the properties of the other control. In this case, I need to put the name of the other control, that's txt input one, and then put the property that I want to read. If I put a dot, I can see what are the properties. The property that I want is called value. It means the value the user typed inside it. So I'm going to click and now it shows here in this text label, the same text that's written in there. I'm going to do a control C and control V of these texts just to get from the second one in this second text. This second text input is called text input one. I rename to txt input2 and then here in the text property of this second one what do I need to do? I need to refer to the second text input that's called txt input2 then we put a dot and see what are the properties that we have. See this is the old one the classic one we have way more properties and we don't have the value property here but we have the text property. This means the text that's written inside it. Besides learning PowerFX, we are also seeing the difference between the modern and the classic controls. So if at some point of the lessons I put, for example, dot value, but it's not working for you, maybe you're using the classic ones or vice versa. Now, since these two are referring these first two inputs, Every time that I type something different, for example, Rudimar, it will reflect in the controls here. The first one, Power Apps. See, it changes the text because I'm using Power Effects to bring the value that's in the first controls in the inputs. And this is what we do always when we build in apps. We cross-reference controls and do actions with them. For example, now the button, instead of showing hello world, could show the text that's written here. For example, let's say this second one, text input 2, is for the user to input the name. We could show hello and then the name of the person because we can put the name here inside the message. So what we are going to do is remove the world, add a comma, and then I want to add the name of the person here that's in this input called txt input2. So what I'm going to do here is to join the two strings, the hello and the name. To do that, we do something called concatenating strings and it's done using this symbol, the n%. So I will have hello joined with 
the txt2 input to dot text. Now when I click on the hello button, it will show this message and the message will depend on what's written in the text input. Let's see it working. I'm going to play the app and click on the button. Now I see hello Rudimar. If I change the name to John and I click hello John. See, here we are interacting with the controls using a notification function in PowerFX and also accessing the controls properties using their names, dots and the property name. Given that, we are ready to do more complex examples and see other functions in PowerFX in the next lesson.